Well, it seems like all we've mm. heard about lately is hackers hitting major corporations and all kinds of places. Well, just recently we learned about hackers, Russian hackers, that mm. stole a billion dollars from some of the world's biggest banks. And the banks didn't really even know about it, but computer hackers, unfortunately, are not only targeting corporations in a new Fox stock. We're diving into the debate about Internet privacy. I spoke to a host of people on the cutting edge of technology, including a man once known as the world's most wanted hacker. And this is something that's deadly serious. What people don't know is what is vulnerable. We don't want an internet in which we're tracked. People just figure that someone is watching out over the internet, and, and it's really not true. Privacy, it's a quaint notion, one that doesn't really exist anymore when we venture online, whether we do it on our mobile phone or on our desktop computer. Every single thing people did online. As illustrated by this video from the ACLU, we are all starring in a dystopian reality show of our own, one where a growing and largely invisible infrastructure of public and private entities enriches itself by monitoring our every keystroke. The internet is, is, is not a magical thing, it's a human institution. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing that's brought so many benefits to our lives, but it doesn't mean that we're not human enough to screw it up. Privacy rules that we agreed to without a second thought a decade ago when we were interacting with the web, primarily through desktop computers, often at work, now enable the tracking of our every move on our mobile phones. We need to collect a few important details about you. We may collect we a debit or, like or credit card number or an image of the card. We use cookies, web beacons, and other technologies. And as we enter the age of what's known as the Internet of Things, a.k.a. homes that are equipped with web-enabled devices, I made your beer extra cold. The potential for abuse is staggering. This month in a move straight out of George Orwell's 1984, Samsung issued a security alert warning people not to divulge sensitive information in front of its voice-activated smart TVs. The fear? What could potentially happen when your words are transmitted to a third-party voice recognition company that enables the computer inside the TV to do what you tell it to? It's enough to make you want to just get in your car, go for a drive, and clear your head. Well, here's the thing, they're watching you here, too. License plate readers at store where and when you travel on major roadways have become ubiquitous across the country. But civil rights advocates say maybe the brakes need to be put on the expansion of license plate readers. When you start looking towards the future where there's three of these on every block, um, you're getting a data trail that's that's high resolution enough that it's, you know, it's, it's the equivalent of putting a GPS tracker on everybody's car. And that's just too much power for the government to have because when you when you have that much information about where people are going and when, you know a lot about how they're living their life. And it's not just the government, it's corporations too. Meet Kevin Mitnick. Well, I started hacking like back when I was a teenager in high school. His life is right out of a Hollywood screenplay. He has even served time for hacking. Mitnick is now one of the world's leading IT security consultants. He's widely known as the world's most famous hacker. It's kind of scary because if you're li living a legitimate life in the United States of America, it would take me 60 seconds on my laptop right here, on this laptop, to basically look up your social security number, your mother's maiden name, your date of birth, your last 10 addresses, your cell phone number, and your landline number. And that's because all our information in America is for sale. It's a troubling situation that the president spoke defiantly about in this year's State of the Union address. No foreign nation, no hacker should be able to shut down our networks, steal our trade secrets, or invade the privacy of American families, especially our kids. And the hack President Obama is referring to the historic one North Korea allegedly committed against Sony. Adam Levin is the former director of the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs. He is an expert in data security. Levin says the Sony hack was a game changer. I don't think we've ever seen anything of the magnitude, the ferocity, or, or the viciousness of this attack on any company ever before. Levin says companies need to take a closer look at their cybersecurity systems. In essence, all of us are vulnerable. This is going to require a paradigm shift in thinking. That, we're, that companies are gonna really have to do what they need to do in, in, in order to shore up their security. But despite the strong words from President Obama, Levin would like to see the government step up its game. This government, our government, has not 
uh, been as serious about this as it should have been. We talked about the corporations, but what about you and me? About 91% of Americans now feel that they are losing control of their personal data. Think about that. According to Pew Research, 9 out of 10 Americans, that is a staggering number. How much privacy do you think you have online? None at all. Nothing at all. No privacy? No, the government knows everything. Do you take any steps to sort of cover up your tracks when you're online or anything like that? No, I don't. But Pew Research says Americans are getting the message there are steps you need to take to be less vulnerable. Americans are aware that more and more pieces of their identity are out there for other people to capture. So we see this really interesting component of their lives of literally monitoring their reputation and trying to adjust it if they see that there are problems. And there are tools consumers can use to protect themselves. Rob Chevelle is the co-founder and CEO of the online privacy and security company Abine. It's all very simple. You don't even have to remember to do it. Abine's goal is to help the consumer control their information by making sure the sites you do business with never actually see your real info. When you get to the checkout form and they're asking you for your credit card, Right when you tap into that field, you'll get a choice, including use your existing cards that you have in your online wallet or something called Mask My Card. And Mask My Card is that choice to protect my card. When you click on that, you can instantly create right there on the shopping form a new credit card that is limited to any amount you want. You don't have to go to any other site. You don't have to remember anything. It automatically uh, pops up to give you a choice that you don't have today. New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman says consumers should not have to go to such lengths to protect their identity. He told us he wants more accountability from corporations. I think whenever we have spoken to people about the fact that private information is currently defined in New York, doesn't protect your email address and password, doesn't protect health insurance information. It protects virtually nothing. People are surprised to hear that, but there is a certain degree to which people just figure that someone is watching out over the internet, and, and it's really not true. While the general public may be surprisingly apathetic about the safety of their data, the attorney general is not. He's urging lawmakers to update laws requiring companies to safeguard people's personal information. He's adamant that creating a well-defined set of security best practices for companies to then implement is in everyone's best interest. We provide an incentive for companies to do the right thing. We also provide a safe harbor uh, which is a very new concept for companies that follow the gold standard, that follow the federal uh, standards that are required for contractors with the federal government. And if you do that, uh, we limit your exposure to liability from my office and also limit your civil liability. We want the companies that are being hacked to view government as their partner in this. In the meantime, keeping our information secure remains our responsibility. Kevin Mitnick offers these tips be smarter about your passwords. He suggests using password managers. What people could do for absolutely free is download what we call password managers. And what password managers do allow you to put all your passwords into a database on your computer and you protect it with a with a passphrase. What is a passphrase? Instead of using a password like computer one, two, three, you, you would actually use a passphrase. You know, the quick brown fox jumped over the fence. So it's long and hard to break and you'd protect all your passwords with this long passphrase. Helpful advice from a man who has been on the other side of the law, but is now looking out for you and me. So it's really up to the individual, people like you and I, to take that extra step. If we just sit back and let it all happen, we might be living in a country that we don't recognize in a few years, and maybe one that we don't like that much. The bottom line is how you think about your information online should be handled and how it actually is being handled are two very different things. The Internet was created to facilitate the flow of information in two directions, not one. And a good rule of thumb to always keep in mind is that when you're using something free online, you're not the customer, you're the product. And that includes apps, too? All of it. All of it. It's all those free apps are not there to give you a free service. Yeah, they're there to take they all want. your data and sell it to everybody. All your contacts, mm -hmm. everything. everything. Okay, so I'm a little overwhelmed by this. Sure. The takeaway. What will you do differently now? Right. Is use some of the things you can to protect your credit card information. That, that site, Abine, which allows you to give a, a random credit card number, random email. It anonymizes everything. You know, the bottom line, one of the people I spoke to that we didn't get on camera was they said, you know, there are things you can do. It's annoying. That's why most people don't do it. Right. But it's worth doing because no one else is looking out for your privacy. Without a doubt. It's too much money to be mm -hmm. made. All right. Nice job.
Uh, the conversation continues on our digital platforms. Check out our extended interview clips with Kevin Mitnick on our YouTube page and like our Facebook page and tell us how worried you are or are not about your data staying private.